everyone, it's Chrissy again with uh, your Fleet and Family Life Skills and Deployment Educator. I'm here today to bring you a request that I had come across my desk for team building. That is not a regular class that we have at Fleet and Family Support Center, so I'm going to actually pull from a few other resources to kind of talk about um, some of the qualities I think for um, building a good team. Now the Navy already has quite a bit of structure in place for developing really cohesive units. Um, so when we get requests for team building, we usually ask a lot of follow-up questions like, has there been any incidences? How's the work-life balance? Where are you in your deployment cycle? So we would tailor the brief kind of to uh, gauge what the responses were to those questions. But without any of that information, I'm just going to provide a general um, team building brief. And again, this is homespun, so take it or leave it and then provide feedback for me and let me know what you thought was useful or not useful. So this is actually a brief that I developed um, for a specific need at Fleet and & Family and it, it was kept in-house. These again are pictures of me on return and reunions. That's when our instructors go underway. So some of these were on the Lincoln and then one of them was on the Essex. Um, if you're looking at my contact information, I'm not at this number right now, but my email still works, okay? So you can contact me if you have any other questions about that. Um, these are some of the resources that I use to kind of talk about this brief. Um, the first one, Leaders Eat Last. Um, this is a book that's on the CNO's reading list, and sometimes when we're looking for additional resources for our life skills courses, we refer to, um, to the CNO's book list. Um, you don't need to go out and purchase a book. By the way, you can always go to the MWR library. Um, Military OneSource also has an online library. Um, but I really do like this book. Um, it has its own particular flavor of leadership, so it might not be for everyone, but I think it actually gets at a lot of the um, questions people have as to why, just like it says, why some teams pull together and why some don't. So I pulled a couple of ideas from this book um, and put it into this brief. The second book that I would recommend, um, it's based on this book. Again, we're not going to be talking about rom romantic relationships, but Gary Chapman's first book was The Five Love Languages. Um, um, Secrets on Relationships to Make Love Last, um, but he has one on workplace called the Five Languages of Workplace Appreciation. It's in my locked office right now, but this book also has an assessment at the end to determine what your workplace appreciation language is and then determine the best ways that you could go about either giving that to your subordinates or their team members or receiving that. So this is another good one that I developed some of this brief on. And then the other one here, this is also on some of the CNO's list, is leading up. So this is how you can lead your boss to help everyone win. I think this is a good one to read when you're kind of um, learning about structure and dynamics. Maybe you don't feel like you have a lot of power at work. This is a good one. It has a lot of anecdote stories and a lot of historical data to kind of show how someone might have helped a leader succeed or a team succeed, um, not necessarily from a leadership role. All right. Um, few, so I want to actually jump in and talk about a concept again from this book, Leaders Eat Last. Um, and the title of the book actually comes from a tradition in the Marines where officers eat after all of the junior, off, junior enlisted and junior officers have eaten. So they have a tradition where leaders eat last every time. So he talks about maintaining and creating a circle of trust within a unit cohesion. So there's danger and vulnerabilities on the outside and we keep everything within the team, within the unit, within the command, inside of the circle and trust. And the trust circle is maintained with, with um, trust, obviously, and communication. But not one comes before the other. You have to have trust before you can effectively communicate and you have to communicate regularly before you have trust. So there's constant communication and trust. So as an example, and this is not anything in particular, but say that I am a part of a unit or a department or a command where there are a lot of moving parts and things changing frequently um, with with. Uh, around the global pandemic, okay? I don't know when my next PCS is. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna get 
if I'm going to be on the next board, I don't know board selection. I don't know what's going to happen to my PRT later. And when I ask these questions, if there is no communication backwards or if there is commute like nil, I might feel like I am not in a circle of trust and communication. So that's an important thing to remember. Um, you need to maintain that. And if you're not getting it as a subordinate, and I actually think in, within the military, everyone's a leader in some respects, okay? Even brand new people out, there's people that are coming in younger in boot camp. So everyone's a leader and don't wait for the opportunity to be in a leadership role to start showing leadership characteristics and leadership skills. So the trust and communication are really important to maintain a effective team. So the other thing that I would like to draw attention to, first I'm gonna read this quote though. When we do not have a sense of belonging, then we are forced to invest time and energy to protect ourselves from each other. And in doing so, we inadvertently make ourselves vulnerable to outside threats and challenges. So that means if I am going to my workplace or even if I'm going home, by the way, this is not just always in our workplace, but if I'm a part of a team where I do not feel like I belong, then I become more invested in protecting myself. And this is just human psychology. If I don't feel like I can trust the people around me, I'm gonna go into a self-protective mode. And then the entire unit is more vulnerable to any kind of outside threats and challenges. So leadership needs to maintain that area of circle and trust, trust and communication, the trust circle, and um, so that they can be ready. And it's especially important in the military so that you can effectively um, manage any kind of threats or challenges that come across you as a unit. So the second thing that I wanna draw attention to, and this is kind of leaning back on human psychology, is there are five hormones that we like to talk about um, when we're dealing with relationships. Oxytocin, which is kind of like the cuddle hormone. Um, serotonin, which gives us a sense of peace and well-being. Cortisol is what we feel, this is why I put in red, it's what we feel when we feel under threat. Endorphins and dopamine are also um, hormones that are not the same as these three, which is why I put them down at the bottom. So what I'm referring to by bringing those up, and again, this is in the Leaders Eat Last book. My colors didn't work very well, so just bear with me. Um, so if I have oxytocin and serotonin, and I feel that regularly with people that are around me, that means I feel appreciated, I feel a part of a group, I feel a sense of calm and peace um, when I'm with my unit, it will produce trust and co cooperation that will relate to a work-life balance, okay? So if I re even if I cannot get off, you know, I have a duty day that doesn't work for me, it doesn't work for my family, if I feel like I am in a unit that is trustworthy and I feel like I'm a part of a team that cooperates really well together and I belong there, then I will have more of a sense of work-life balance, even if that might not translate hour-wise to work-life balance. So oxytocin will actually boost our immune system. It will give us the benefits of like good sleep and vitamins and all of that. And cortisol will compromise it. So another interesting story, and I don't have the reference for me right now, um, is that people that are in work environments where they have to constantly defend themselves actually have lower immune defenses. So they actually have more colds, fevers, they get sick more often. Kind of interesting, huh? All right, so cortisol, again, the, the um, hormone that makes me feel threatened will inhibit the release of oxytocin. So even if I have oxytocin coming in, even if someone else is telling me a good job but I feel threatened in my work environment, it will release um, oxytocin. And that's really responsible for empathy. And empathy is one of the most important things we need to have in our relationships for them to be healthy and understand each other. Empathy is basically something within me relates to something within you and we understand and we connect on a level. Um, Empathy is really important in parenting. It's really important in relationships. And if we don't have empathy, we are not going to have a really functional, functional relationship. Endorphins and dopamine are selfish hormones. So endorphins are like um, the kick I get after I go running. And dopamine is sometimes what's released when we have like some kind of a chemical reaction, like we're on drugs or um, experience uh, some other kind of high. 
Um, and those are selfish hormones. So if we have those going within our, um, within our department, so this might be, I might actually get an endorphin kick or a dopamine kick if someone, if I win at the expense of someone else. So if I get a promotion over someone else, I might feel a little selfish, but if I get an endorphin kick off of that, it's gonna create an unhealthy work environment, all right? And when the chemicals are all in balance, we gain an almost supernatural ability for courage, inspiration, foresight, creativity, and empathy. Sorry, you can't read this. I just, I can send you the slides that have colors that are a lot better. Um, they didn't print correctly. So I think those hormones are really important. Um, I'm going to wrap up on part two of this team building and um, I'll see you in a moment. Bye.